Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Yamgul Agagi. We sincerely apologize that we're beginning the program a little bit late this morning. But sometimes you plan, like my brother would say, man proposes, God rearranges. And that's mm. what happened to us this morning. But we're glad that we're finally here and mm. we're going to make the best use of the remaining time that we have. Yes. Uh, so. We cannot say it's too late, we cannot say we cannot do anything anymore, but for mm. the small moments that we have together, let's make them count. All right, well, once again, we sincerely apologize. And right now we'll be going to our first hot topic. All right, and joining us to um, have a conversation is Nick Agule. This one talks about IMF predicts Nigeria price levels to surge by 20, 23% by 2025. Um, so. Uh, Nick Agule would like to welcome you and uh, warn you <laughs> beforehand that while we're talking uh, on this topic, we might need to uh, touch a little bit on some of the headlines on our uh, newspapers uh, just to buttress what we are, we'll be discussing. Okay. Because today we missed out on Of The Press, so we might just uh, mention a few things from the newspapers this morning as we're talking with you. Mm. Well, in the meantime, good morning, Nick, and welcome to the breakfast on this day. Uh, Rume, good morning, uh, Nyamgu, and good morning to our viewers globally. Good morning. Good morning to you. Okay, so let's just um, take some headlines here. And leading with the punch, it says, El Refai Marketers, fuel subsidy claims wrong. Um, the writers on this one says, bring evidence of subsidy payments. Lokobi retails El Refai Marketers. NNPC insists it's recovering full cost. Marketers peg petrol at 900 naira per liter. Um, another one here on the punch says, Cardoso links depleting reserves to debt repayments. And the writer says, CBN stops banks from lending 50% of deposits. On The Guardian, we have poor funding model, poor city stall, $3.2 billion Eastern Rail project three years after. Um, another one here is talking about what's happening with the PDP. It says, all eyes on PDP, PDP governors as RU lawsuits withdraw alters balance for Damagom. Um, another one says, um, federal government kicks as Kanu lists conditions for resumption of trial. Court affirms Gandu J. Sack APC kicks. Um, why Nigeria's foreign reserves dipped by Cardoso. If we move over to the Guardian, we have CBN not using reserves to defend Naira, and that is by Cardoso. We also have um, the train eight. Well, it says contract dispute threatens Nigeria's LNG expansion plans. Um, and also for the PDP, it says PDP governors move to avert implosion. Um, also, the rise in price, um, prices of foodstuffs, FCCPC deploys operators to markets. Um, and then on the Daily Trust, well, it leads with governors at Tiku WK tests strength as PDP neck meeting holds today. And the writers on this one says, are you withdraws suit against party? NWC passes vote of confidence on Damagam and the North Central insists on completing our use term. So those are um, the That's stories, the, uh, some of the headlines on our national dailies. So before we enter into what we're really talking, which is uh, part of the headlines, would like your general comments on some of the headlines that we have on uh, national daily, uh, dailies rather, this morning uh, before we delve into the issue at hand. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start with uh, the foreign reserves. Uh, foreign reserves are depleting, uh, but the CBN governor has come forward to say that uh, he is not using the foreign reserves to defend the Naira, mm. that is to push dollars into the market so that it will show up the value of the Naira, that they are using the foreign reserves to pay that. And that's his explanation. I'm not in a position to say it's true or not. But uh, I have come to understand that uh, governments do tell you something, but the reality is different. And this very government uh, has done same. Like, for instance, uh, they told us fuel subsidy is gone. Uh, now we hear that they are paying as much as uh, 600 billion per month for, for fuel subsidy. 
and that is actually in line with the reality because oil prices as we speak now uh, are nearing the 90 dollars uh, per barrel levels and so uh, we cannot continue buying petrol at the same price if there were no fuel subsidies so but uh, if it turns out that they're actually using a uh, foreign reserve to defend the naira uh, i don't i'm not supportive of such a policy because i always ask the question uh, in, in whose benefit is a strong naira and the only people I see as beneficiaries of a strong Naira are those who want to import stuff into Nigeria or who want to pay foreign school fees or want to pay hospital bills or travel abroad. Those are the people that are interested in a strong Naira. Otherwise, a weak Naira is the one that will help Nigeria to export more things because then our, our, our goods will be cheaper. Uh, and what the government then needs to do is that instead of defending the Naira, the government should just roll up their sleeves and start creating the enabling environment to return Nigeria to productivity. Because the basic problem that this country faces now is low output. We are not producing enough, and that is why there's unemployment, and that is why there's inflation. Once we return to productivity, then things will begin to sort themselves out. And we cannot produce with 3,000 megawatts of electricity. So that's where they actually need to go back to. You know, then talking about politics, you know, for me, it's very concerning that the parties cannot even manage their own parties. Parties that want to manage Nigeria, the APC, the PDP, the Labour Party, they want to manage Nigeria. But they cannot even manage their own parties. If you cannot manage your party, then it, it, how are you not going to manage Nigeria? You know, so all these parties, are they are embroiled in all sorts of internal issues. And they are all bordering on lack of internal democracy. Parties that cannot even conduct elections into the uh, national working committee uh, they, they look at INEC and they are, and they are talking to INEC you, you cannot conduct the election in your party but then so why i'm not a spokesman for INEC i'm saying maybe they perhaps need to go and uh, start cleaning up their own houses before they even think about what happens at the national you know so those are uh, some of my first thoughts on the, on the newspaper headlines okay so how about we move over to um the one about fuel subsidy so it says l refined marketers fuel subsidy claims wrong and that is by the federal government and nnpc and in fact look what we has told l refined to bring evidence of subsidy payments um he, he was speaking to l refined and the marketers and nnpc insists it is recovering full cost the marketers peg petrol at 900 um, Naira per liter. So how about this? Because some people are saying that, you know, there is a quasi subsidy that has been paid because if you're looking at how the dollar had gone up, um, if we're still paying the same amount, which is about 568 Naira from NNPC, then it makes no sense. For every single time when the dollar rises, um, we expect that fuel um, should also go up with it. And when the dollar comes down um, or when the Naira gains strength in this case, we expect that it should, it should be better as well so what do you think about this do you think there is a quasi subsidy that is being paid by the federal government without us knowing and no one is being transparent enough to let us know well, except there is some sort of magic that is happening in nigeria <laughs> that we can continue to buy petrol at the same price when global oil prices are rising because the, the oil price is actually the biggest factor contributory factor to how much you pay at the pump and in Nigeria, it is compounded with uh, exchange rate since we are importing and not producing it locally. But you will see that within this time that President Tinubu said fuel subsidy is gone. And we started buying petrol, like you said, at NNPC depot price of 500 and something. And then uh, the price at the pump of 600 and something. That was almost like a year ago when the president made that uh, announcement and then we got these prices to this level. Between that time and now, OA prices have swung from the $60 to the $90. And there is no way OA prices will be swinging like that. And the price that Nigerians are paying at the pump remains the same. It's impossible, except it is some, some magic. If we're magicians, we can work out the math. But if we're not magicians, I can tell you that the refineries abroad where we are going to buy petroleum products. They are not into charity. They are into business. So immediately, oil prices begin to rise. They increase their cost of refining, and they transfer those costs into uh, the, the cost of uh, petroleum products. 
So there's no way Nigeria can say that, oh, despite the fact that uh, oil prices are risen from uh, the $60 range to the $90 range, the refineries abroad are still uh, not increasing our prices. So uh, the evidence is empirical. Even if the government does not provide any evidence that they are paying subsidies, the evidence is, in, is, is empirical. You can see it that there's just no way you can continue buying petrol at this same price. Uh, and and uh, imagine that dollar rose to 1,800 and still petrol was at the same price. It, 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 the the mass does, simply doesn't add up. All right. Um, okay, so let's move over to the crux of the matter this morning. And this is talking about Governor's Way barring PDPs at Tiko Wiki from neck meetings. Now, concerned groups of people, um, People's Democratic Party, PDP, you know, have called on the Board of Trustees um, about this. What is your take on, on this whole issue? Yes, so uh, my take is, I, I, I take off from the point I let it off uh, during the newspaper review. I, you know, it, it, it's a shame that the political parties in Nigeria who are yearning for our votes to govern Nigeria cannot govern themselves. They are unable to govern themselves. And if they can't govern themselves, they can't conduct primaries, for instance. Political parties conduct primaries amongst their members. And these primaries are so far from anything democratic and it ends up in all sorts of legal cases in court and all that. And these are parties that now say, oh, I have the, the capacity to rule Nigeria. It's impossible, you know? So all that is happening, and like I said, all the major parties in Nigeria are having these issues. The APC, you know what is happening there now. Uh, the PDP is what we're talking about now. The Labour Party, you see what is happening there. Parties that have no no uh, cohesion, parties that can't even fix themselves. So as Nigerians, uh, we're in real trouble. And for me, uh, the citizens need to get more involved in the governance process. Citizens need to, to, to work up from where they are sitting. Because where we are sitting now, anything that is thrown at us, we just take it, you know? And we're looking at parties who cannot even sort themselves out. And then tomorrow we're going to troop out to be casting votes for these parties. We should punish these parties at the polls. The parties should be aware that what they are doing, we are watching. And when the elections come, we will punish them. It's better for Nigerians to even go and cast their votes for unknown parties, to sweep elections, to punish these major parties. So what's happening in the PDP is not, uh, is not, is not unusual. This is the problem. There's a power play between the weak uh, group and the, the the rest of the group where, where perhaps some of the governors are. Uh, this party has never had a, a neck meeting for a long time since uh, the man who is there as acting chairman has been there. They have been trying to have the neck meeting. It, it is not been possible. Let's hope that this time around, the attempts that they are making, they will be able to have this neck meeting They'll be able to put their ass together and they'll be able to show Nigerians that indeed they have the capacity to come back into power. Otherwise, this is simply too shoddy, too shoddy uh, an arrangement and, it, and it's very shameful. I am Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia Jr., a convener of Country First Movement, and he will also be lending his voice to some of the things that we'll be talking about today. You see, we're, today we're looking at the, um, the headlines and also at one of the very prominent headlines here. So we are going to be joined by, we're being joined actually by Chris Wokobia uh, Jr. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Professor, okay, as soon as we are able to connect with him, we are going to bring him on to also uh, give us his thoughts on uh, some of the things that are happening right now. Um, we've, we've seen a situation, we'll come back to what we're talking about. We've seen a situation where uh, the APC, some, these are some of the headlines, the APC's national chairman has been suspended by his ward, which eventually carries his name anyway, Ganduje Ward. Uh, in his state, 
And then the, the, the local government um, executive said no, the state executive said no, and the national executive said no, and now they're blaming um, opposition party, even though these uh, concerns are coming from the EFCC, the, some of the allegations that are leveled against him. That's on the one hand. And then we see a, an ex-governor who was supposed to be arrested yesterday uh, to face um, the court this morning, who was smuggled out of his residence by a sitting governor of that state. And we're, we're just concerned about what this our democracy looks like to the outside world. How would you describe these two scenarios, an, an APC uh, national chairman being suspended and every other person apart from the word executive is saying that that cannot stand even though the court has pronounced it and then another one uh, who is supposed to be arrested an ex-governor is being smuggled out by a sitting governor which means they are resisting arrest and the mm -hmm. governor is aiding and abetting well for now forgive me if I call him the criminal Suspected criminal. Suspected criminal. criminal. Yes. yes, that's the, the name I should have used. Yeah. Yes. So what are you? So, your so, thoughts? so, the, the, these are the kind of headlines. These are the kind of headlines that make us to worry. The, the, you know, as much as we have, you know, the, the, the confidence about Nigeria, we have hope in Nigeria. We believe that Nigeria will rise up from the ashes and take his rightful place in the Committee of Nations. You know, news like this, you know, step, step us back from that uh, optimism that we carry. Uh, because first and foremost, uh, for the APC national chairman, uh, yes, it is in the right of his world executive to suspend him because that is where your party membership begins. Every party member uh, registers at the world, and the world is where um, uh, matters that relate to your membership of the party are decided. So if the world executives have uh, sat and said, this man, based on all the corruption cases against him, is no longer worthy to lead the party at the national level, and therefore we are suspending him from his uh, duties as a party man, they are in their right to do so. And for those who are now trying to railroad the world executives, who are now trying to stampede the world executives, uh, some are even read somewhere that they were removed from the office and, uh, and all of that, uh, they should follow due process. And the due process is either to follow the party's internal dispute resolution mechanism, or they should go to court, you know? But coming out to make this kind of grandstanding statement, statements that show as if you are above the law, you can do what you, you want to do, you can decide ir irrespective of what the law says or what the constitution of the party says, it is your word that will be heard. These things are things like the, the kind of things that should happen in military regimes where you have uh, some, some military strongman who wins a gun and just gets his decision done whether people like it or not. It should never have a place in a democracy. And for me, uh, you know, the parties just need to get their house in order because the way they are carrying on, uh, they are showing the whole world, you know, that uh, they, they, they don't have the capability to be able to manage Nigeria. Uh, now, coming to the other issue that happened at the Kogi State, um, at, no, at the residence of the, the former Kogi State governor, again, this is the kind of lawlessness that you know is being perpetrated by people in the highest levels of authority in Nigeria. You know, people that uh, are public servants, civil servants. The word servant means these guys are serving us. They are our employees, but they, they lord it over us. They run roughshod over the laws. The laws that they place their hands on the constitution and either the Bible or the Quran and so that they will defend. They are the first to break it, you know, and the, the, the action of the Kogi State governor yesterday is shameful, and we can understand that he, he's, doing, he's doing everything uh, in his powers to be able to pay back to his master, who ran roughshod over every structure in uh, Kogi State to, to make him governor, uh, but this is not the way to pay him back. 
you don't pay him back by stopping the the arms of the of the law from getting this man and i wonder how far he's going to run with him is he going to take him into exile outside the country or he's just going to keep him somewhere without uh, the man ever coming out because once he comes out he's going to be in the in the hands of uh, the law and actually the law must take his course if he's found to have uh, done some wrong things then he has to he has to stand for that he has to pay for that until we get to that point in nigeria we're not going to have a good country uh, I, I tell people former uh, u.s president uh, donald trump he's he's in court uh his successor uh, joe biden is in court his own son is in court uh, that is the way democracy runs whoever you are the law should be above you but what happened yesterday at the residence of the former Kogi, Kogi state governor shows that there are some people who are above the law in Nigeria, and that shouldn't be the case. I understand, because uh, a group came out to say uh, that um, it is an opposition party that is trying to uh, rubbish the um, APC national chairman so that the president will have no option than to remove him from office. And I was just laughing. What business does the president have to go and influence a party constitution and remove a party chairman? In those days, party leaders used to be different from, from political appointees or political uh, office holders. Uh, now it seems as if, if you have the highest office in the state or in the country, you automatically become the leader of the party, which means you can do anything that you want to do. I don't understand how these has things uh, have things changed or this is just because Nigerian uh, politicians just choose to do whatever they want to do? Does the president even have that kind of power to remove a chairman of a party? The president does not have such powers. The president can only influence the removal of a party uh, chairman. <clears throat> because, it, like we said, it starts from his word and goes through the state uh, executive to the zonal executive to the national executive uh, so the party constitution is very clear as to how a chairman is appointed is disciplined and is removed and the president unilaterally on his own shouldn't and i say shouldn't because in nigeria anything goes who knows if the president decides that uh Alaji ganduje is no longer worthy to be a party chairman by that body language alone uh, the fate of uh, the, the, the chairman will be put paid. So uh, what we are looking for is that instead of coming up with differences like or an opposition party is throwing all sorts of things at the party chairman, the party chairman, if he didn't do anything wrong, should approach the court and plead his innocence, you know, because those who are accusing him of wrongdoing, they are expected to bring evidence to court to show that, yeah, this is where he was wrong. This is where he did the wrong things. And if he didn't do the wrong things, he can also uh, show evidence and prove himself and get himself out of the, the, the arms of the law. That is the way you should operate. Why can't we just let the law take his natural course? This whole issue of saying um, uh, nobody should be charged, some people even go to court to say the court should stop a court process. You know, it's in Nigeria, I see these kind of things. And, you know, and we can never make headway with the development of this democracy if we don't want to be a nation that is being run by the laws. Until rule of law reigns supreme, I don't think there's any nation in the world that is doing well, that is prosperous, is thriving, that the rule of law does not reign supreme. The rule of law has a direct link to the economic prosperity of nations and the stability of nations, and the security of nations. And until Nigeria gets there, I don't think we want to even start. Yeah, well, um, we may come back to that, uh, uh, the political angle that we're looking at in all these issues, but um, whatever happens in politics uh, affects us as well. Today, there's one of these headlines that is saying that uh, Consumer Protection uh, Agency has deployed its uh, men to markets to go and uh, see how they can make sure that prices come down. And I'm just wondering, we, have, we still have a case of uh, the 
woman, the tomato reviewer, and the Erisco Foods and all that. I hear the case is going to be called up today or something like that. Consumer protection seem to have done nothing, actually. And today they are deploying people into the markets because the prices of things are really high. I, I don't know what you think about that move. Because that's what the government is giving it's us wrong as move. far as we are concerned. It's a wrong move, a totally wrong move. We cannot have a government that is saying, I am uh, quoting uh, investors, let them come in. And the same government is raiding markets and saying your price is too high. What is the determinant of the price? What is the determinant? Those uh, uh, federal uh, consumer uh, protection uh, people uh, that are going to be in the market, what is the criteria? If they see a Moodle of Gary and it is 1,000, what? How do they not determine that, oh, this Moodle of Gary should not be 1,000, it should be 700? What is the basis? What are they using? Are they the ones that went to, market, to, the, to the market to buy? Are they the ones that are cultivating the cassava? Are they the ones that are now paying diesel at 1.5 to grind the gari? Are they the ones that, in the light of uh, a fuel price hike, um, uh, are now transporting the gari from the point of uh, production to the point of sale? And at how much? Are they the ones that are now paying electricity at uh, this uh, new rate? To be able to produce the gari, are they the ones that are paying the the rent in the in the stores where the gari is being sold? What would be their basis for saying your price is too high? So you see the problem, the the, the, the problem of inflation in Nigeria, you know, is about productivity. So I was talking about productivity. So go back again, full full square to productivity. It, you know, uh, uh, the basic economics says. The price of any commodity or service is determined by demand or supply. Now, in Nigeria, supply is what is determining prices. But people in government think it's demand. It's not demand. It's supply. They are not looking at the supply side of the economics. If the supply of a commodity is small, the price of that commodity will go up. And, you know, the other day I was talking about telecoms. When it was NITE providing telecoms, the telephones to Nigerians, because NITE was only able to provide about 500,000 lines to all Nigerians. The price of telephone was very high because the lines were so small, people were scrambling for them to the extent that I sold my own wife's phone for 150,000 more than 20 years ago. The MTNs and co, when they came in, they increased the supply. As we are speaking today, there are close to 200 million active telephone lines in Nigeria. And the price has collapsed. You know, just think about 500,000 to 200 million. And that is why a, a SIM card now is, is almost like for free. And you don't have to pay what you used to pay. So if Nigeria wants to deal with inflation. We need to go and look at the supply side of the economics. This country is not producing, especially food. You know, in the last data that was re released by the National Bureau for Statistics, MBS, it said food inflation is now above 40%. And what is the reason? One, uh, the farmers who were in their farms producing small, small food for us are not there again, driven away by banditry and all sorts of criminality into RDP camps. And under President Tinubu, it has continued. Number two, even the farmers who are in farms today, they are producing so little food because it is not mechanized. They are using their manual labor. You know, a, a farmer who is using his manual labor can only produce as much. If you give him a machine like a tractor, he can produce 1,000 times more food than he's currently producing. Then number three, we are importing food but because of the increase in the cost of the dollar, the, it has been transferred into the cost of the import. So this is the thing that is making food inflation to gallop to this level. And if Nigeria wants to solve it, it is not by sending uh, federal officials into the market to go and harass business people. It is by saying, what are we going to do to increase the supply of food in Nigeria? And there are short-term, medium-term, and long-term measures. And those are the areas that the government needs to be looking into.
policies that the government is ma making are the ones that are affecting us so much, so much. So um, just uh, to wrap up um, about what we really intended to talk about this morning, uh, what will be your, your recommendations for internal party politics? Because when they don't get it right within the family, they cannot get it right in the national space. So what are your, some of your recommendations as fast as possible so that we can wrap up? So my recommendations are that all the political parties in Nigeria must allow internal democracy to happen. It's possible they don't like people, they don't like each other as a family, they have their squabbles, but everything has to be done under the law. And if they follow due process, then it's a signal to us, the electorate, that they are a party that we follow due process if they are handed Nigeria or the states or the local governments to manage. And until they do that, uh, to me, it's very shameful that we have this kind of situation. My recommendation is that Nigerians need to come up from where they are. We're sitting too docile. Uh, the, the parties and the political leaders have no need to fear us. And once a citizen gets themselves into that position, they are never going to get good governance. The difference between Nigeria and the UK or US or Germany or France or elsewhere is that the leaders, they know that the citizens are fully engaged in the governance process. And the leaders are constantly monitoring the mood of the people. They are watching the reaction of the people and their actions are, are based on what they think the reaction of the people will be. Until we get ourselves into that position where our political leaders will begin to fear us in Nigeria, who will begin to look at us and say, if I do this kind of thing, Nigerians are going to punish me until we get there. We're never going to get good governance from Nigeria. So for me, it even goes beyond the political parties. This game has to be played by the people. And it is the people who will say no. And even their body language will show that if we do this, we are going to punish you like this. Until we get to that position where politicians fear us, we're never going to get good governance in this country. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nick. Um, sorry that we had to budge a lot of things on you. We just uh, combined a lot of things. And yeah, it's bombarded you, that's the <laughs> word. Uh, but uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so as much. Always. It's not a problem. Uh, Nigeria is ours, and everything that is needed to get Nigeria working We'll all do it. Yeah. Thank you. Right. And Thank you nice so day to our Thank our you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, we've been talking with Nick Agule, and um, we, we, were, we were concerned about the, what was happening in the PDP and uh, so many other parties that are supposed to take the lead in our political space. Uh, but we were combining that with some uh, aspects of, of the press. And we're going to continue with that uh, because we're being joined, as yes. we promised, by Chris Wokobia, uh, Mustafa Wokobia Jr., uh, the convener of Country First. Yes, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll have Chris joining mm. us, and we'll take more stories from the headlines. Please stay with us.